Here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> oh, we're both wearing white. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> we don't look at each other sometimes. I so guess. Actually. <laughs> Not in that way, anyway. Right. <laughs> Oh, good grief. Well, we hope it doesn't mess with the light balance. So we're going to start with O oh God of Light, number 836, just because it has a reference to a lamp. But it is it is summarizing the, the theme of light through scripture. So number 836. Verse 31. You shall make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand shall be made of hammered work. Its base, its stem, its cups, its calyxes, and its flowers shall be of one piece with it. And there shall be six branches going out of its sides. Three branches of the lampstand out of one side of it, and three branches of the, la the lampstand out of the other side of it. Three cups made like almond blossoms, each with calyx and flower, on one branch, and three cups made like almond blossoms, each with calyx and flower, on the other branch. So, for the six branches going out of the lampstand. And on the lampstand itself, there shall be four cups made like almond blossoms with their calyxes and flowers, and a calyx of one piece with it under each pair of the six branches going out from the lampstand. Their calyxes and their branches shall be of one piece with it, the whole of it a single piece of hammered work of pure gold. You shall make seven lamps for it, and the lamps shall be set up so as to give light on the space in front of it. Its tongs and their trays shall be of pure gold. It shall be made with all these utensils, utensils out of a talent of pure gold. And see that you make them after the pattern for them, 
which is being shown you on the mountain. Man, this is detailed. This is, this is so, uh, these are instructions that could come from a jeweler for how to make an elaborate piece of jewelry or, or sculpture. This is, uh, this is for an artist to envision, which is, of course, who God will call to create these things. Moses is not the guy that makes this. He's just going to say, here's your instructions. And they make this elaborate lampstand with seven lamps on it. Um, we sort of seem to picture it always uh, like we have candles on lampstands in churches. And uh, that, that also is kind of a, that's a thing for liturgical churches. You don't see in worship on a stage, usually the kinds of, the kinds of forms of worship that are modern and freeform. Uh, you don't usually see candles. Um, but from the very beginning of establishing of, uh, uh, an order of worship or a way of worship, it's these, these lamps have a significance. And, and they, they are little lamps on the lamp stand. Um, well, uh, like this. Probably more elaborate than this. This is a this is a very simple, um, common home lamp from the first century. So, but but not dramatically changed in its function or form uh, over a couple of thousand years before Jesus. And uh, and seven of those lamps then on this on this ornate golden stand. Um, that stand has been important enough that it is a symbol of the nation of Israel today. It's a symbol of the Jewish faith. And it's still included in most Lutheran and Catholic and a lot of other, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm trying to remember, Presbyterian churches we've been in, if they had something like this, we will often have three on one side of the altar and three on the other and two on the altar itself or there's various arrangements but this lampstand has seven because of that, that significance uh, of that number in scripture and, and the image connected with worship of light not um uh, not just that worship is all about just the altar and sacrifice, but the image of enlightening. That God with us casts light. That his presence means light. I think there are many more symbols of darkness in worship today, in the, in the world, and the things that the world worships. Uh, things about uh, injury and, and wounding and um, burdens. But in the, in the faith of Jesus Christ, the followers of, of the Savior, the promised Savior here in the Old Testament, light is what represents what God is doing among us. The altar represents a sacrifice that will be made, but the candle stand represents God bringing us into light and out of darkness. And so when Jesus comes, it says that light came into the world and the darkness did not comprehend it, but it, but it could not overcome it. Uh, and John, the first chapter of John, read that today, repeatedly, the first several verses, about light was coming into the world and... Uh, that light was the life of men. We don't have to have a candle stand in your house. We don't have to have, necessarily have to have candles in, in church. But they're a very good reminder to us that, that some days when it feels like we live in darkness and we can't see what's going on, Jesus is light still for us and opens our eyes 
to our Heavenly Father and His love for us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank You for the light. Each day as we begin our worship, Lord, uh, we have struggled here to have uh, proper light in our devotions for the camera to work. Lord, enlighten our hearts and our minds. Cast light into our lives so that we may see you and your truth and follow in the midst of darkness and know that we are not alone. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.